Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher. If you're new here, my name is Lauren and I am a full-time kindergarten teacher who also flips furniture on the side in order to earn a profit that I was putting straight toward my student loan debt. But as so many of you were able to see, I actually accomplished that goal midway through April and I paid off my entire student loan debt. Stay tuned to see how I did that. And we're gonna start at the beginning of the month with all of my flips from April. Before we hop into the flips, I wanna take a moment to just thank you guys. I say it almost every video, but it's truly coming from the heart when I say that I could not do this without you guys and your constant support. Whether it be watching our videos, commenting on our videos, following us on Instagram, or just simply being here. I couldn't do this without you. Neiman and I sincerely appreciate all of the support that you have shown. We are up to over 40,000 subscribers on YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's hop into April's flips. For furniture flip number one of the month of April, I started off by flipping this beautiful solid wood dresser that I got at Habitat for Humanity Restore of Omaha. And I got it for $75. My first steps were to remove the hardware and give it a nice cleaning so that the paint would adhere to the surface. Since this piece was solid wood, I knew that I needed to prime so that no stain would pop through the paint since I had chosen a light color. This was my first time trying out Jolie paints and I absolutely loved it. I chose the color Farmhouse Beige and it was a bit more tan than I thought it was going to be, but I really thought that the paint was simple and easy to apply. I did two coats so I made sure to sand down lightly in between the first and the second coat so that I could smooth out any possible brush strokes. The Jolie paint was really good at self-leveling and I decided to do a light distressing around the whole entire dresser so I took my hand sander and sanded back some of the paint that I had put on. I decided that Jolie's clear wax was the top coat that I was going to use to seal the entire piece. So I reinstalled the hardware. This is actually the first piece that I ended up taking back to the Omaha Habitat for Humanity Restore, and they've got a market area. So I became a vendor back there. Neiman and I thought it would be really awesome to try out another way of selling our furniture. So we brought that dresser right back to the ReStore and it sat there for a couple of weeks and I also continued to have it listed on Facebook Marketplace. I ended up selling it to a friend of ours for $375. So after paying $75 and spending about $25 in used materials, I was able to get a profit of $275 that I put straight toward my student loan debt. For furniture flip number two of the month of April, I flipped this beautiful vintage buffet that I got for $70 on Facebook Marketplace. It was in almost perfect condition and I barely had to do any repair work on it. I removed the hardware and cleaned down the entire piece and then I gave the sides a light scuff sand while sanding the finish off of the top completely. I wiped off the dust from sanding and then I was ready to apply some stain. I used Dixie Belle's No Pain Gel Stain in the color Walnut for the legs of the piece as well as the top of the piece. I love how easy that No Pain Gel Stain goes on. It is truly no pain. Then I used Collard Greens Chalk Mineral Paint from Dixie Belle and I applied that to the rest of the piece. I used clear wax as well as a brown wax to give it a little bit of depth as well as to seal the green paint. On top of the buffet, I used a clear coat in flat. Then I reinstalled the hardware and used Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter to revitalize the insides of the drawers. It's really shined up the wood and brought it back to life. This piece is another one that we took over to the ReStore and there it still sits. Unfortunately, this is a piece that I am still holding on to and waiting for that right person. So I wanna take a minute to talk about patience. In furniture flipping, one of the most important qualities that you have to have and that you have to remember is to be patient. 
Not every piece flies off the market in an hour or two or even days or even weeks. I've been holding on to this piece of furniture for almost an entire month. It's not just you guys that tell me stories about you holding on to different pieces. It happens to all of us. So don't get discouraged. Keep your pieces listed. Try not to budge. I've still actually got this piece listed at $500 and every so often I'll get an inquiry on Facebook Marketplace, but it still hasn't reached that right person yet. I know it'll come soon. Stay patient and don't get frustrated. Your work is worth the price. Just wanted to throw that in there. Let's go to number three. For furniture flip number three, four, and five of the month of April, I did another mismatched dresser and nightstand set. I brought back the classic Rust-Oleum glaze for this set as well. And I got both of these pieces from Goodwill, but two different Goodwills. I got the tall chest for $50, and then I got the two nightstands for $14 for the pair. I just knew that these three pieces would make an amazing set. So I got started by removing all of the hardware and then giving all of the pieces a nice clean. You just wanna make sure that you use a degreaser when you are cleaning your furniture. You wanna clean your pieces before you paint so that not only will the paint adhere, but also because you don't know what is on these pieces pieces and since you'll be selling the furniture you want to make sure everything is clean. After everything was clean and dry I took some Dixie mud and I filled a few of the hardware holes from the nightstands and on the top drawer of the dresser that way I could later match the hardware. The nightstands were solid wood so I went ahead and evened out the tops and scuff sanded everywhere else so that the paint could better adhere. And this is one of the first times that I ended up trying out the spray primer. I used Ben Shellac primer on the wooden nightstands so that the stain wouldn't pop through and then I ended up using a regular spray primer on the chest so that the paint could better adhere since that was a pretty glossy surface. Not only did the primer help protect the stain from popping through, but this was also a really nice base coat for my white paint. Instead of having to apply three coats of white, I only had to do two since that primer helped eliminate that dark wood tone underneath. I quickly sanded down the places where I had applied the Dixie mud in the hardware holes and then I was able to prime those drawers as well. After the primer was dry, I was able to take a very fine sanding block and sand down each piece to smooth out the surface before I put my paint on. I used a zebra brush to apply my paint as well as a Mr. Spray Bottle while using the Rust-Oleum Linen White Chalk Paint. The spray bottle really helps smooth out the paint and thin it out just a little bit so that it applies really nicely and it also helps lessen those brush strokes. Once I got both coats of the linen white on, I took my hand sander and distressed lightly along the edges of the drawers and the pieces, and then I used Rust-Oleum's Aged Gray for the top of the nightstands and the dresser. Once the aged gray was dry on the top, I began applying the smoked glaze. I made sure to get all of the edges and wipe back evenly so that I would not have any odd spots. Next, I started to re-drill the holes needed to install the new hardware, and then it was time to put the hardware back on. I did a top coat on the base of the dresser and nightstands, as well as on the tops, and then I posted this on Facebook Marketplace for $340. Not long after that, I had an inquiry, actually a couple of inquiries, but one of them was ready to come that night. So I got my full asking price of $340. So after spending about $64 on the furniture, and $26 on materials. I was about $90 in, giving me a profit of $250 that I put straight toward my student loan debt. For furniture flips number six and seven of the month of April, I got these two beautiful wood and pink velvet chairs. These were a little bit different than any of the chairs that I have flipped before, but these honestly came with minimal work. I found them at the ReStore for $40 for the pair and I was able to bring them home 
clean them up by just vacuuming them really quickly and wiping down the wood. And then I sold them on Facebook Marketplace in less than an hour of being listed. I had them listed at $260 and then they asked if we could deliver. So we added another $25 onto that. So we sold them for a total of $285 giving us a total profit of $240 that I put straight toward my student loan debt. Those velvet chairs were definitely some of the quickest that I had sold. Keep watching because I've got another one for you. For furniture flips number eight and nine of the month of April, I flipped these two solid wood nightstands. And I actually ended up painting these with the same classic Rust-Oleum smoked glaze and paint that I had done the previous set of this month because someone else was interested in just the nightstands of that set. I priced these two nightstands at $225 and she gave me a Venmo deposit of $100 just so that I would know she would come and pick them up. So I got started right away by removing the hardware and giving these nightstands a nice clean. Then I had to do a little bit of repairing on the top of one of the nightstands where the corner had chipped off a little bit but I used my Minwax wood filler and after it dried for a day, it was like it was good as new. I sanded down the nightstands with a light scuff sand on the surface and then again, tried out the Bin Shellac Base Primer in the spray can. I was getting the hang of it and I will definitely continue to use the spray primer here and there, but I also don't mind brushing it on from time to time. After the primer was dry, I gave a nice smooth sanding with my sanding block all over the surfaces and then I was able to apply the Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint to the base and the drawers of each nightstand. And since I was going for that smoked glazed top, I needed to apply the aged gray Rust-Oleum chalk paint to the tops of both nightstands. Once that aged gray was dry, I was able to take my smoked glaze and apply that as well. While everything was drying and before I put a top coat on, I made sure to drill the holes for the hardware that the client had chosen. I top coated the bases of the nightstands and was ready to apply some smoked glaze on the top. After wiping back the excess smoked glaze, I was ready to install the hardware and put on the top coats to both nightstands. Then our customers came to pick them up and they were very happy with them. I ended up getting these actually at Goodwill at the same time I had gotten those other nightstands. They had a 65% off sale, so that was a perfect time to get those. So I spent $15 for the pair of nightstands, priced them at $225 spent about $15 in materials, so we're in at $30, and then I came away with a profit of $195 that I put straight toward my student loan debt. For furniture flips number 10 and 11, I flipped these two wood and orange velvet chairs. I found them on Facebook Marketplace for $40 and my parents went and picked them up for me about a half hour away. I was so excited to get these posted because I knew the pink ones had sold so quick. So I was super excited that these orange ones were gonna go quick as well. I ended up pricing those a little bit higher, actually $100 higher than I had the other ones because my dad was kind of interested in keeping them for our living room. Well, then he changed his mind, so we began lowering the prices of those chairs and I ended up selling them for $280. So after getting them for 40, that's a profit of $240 that went straight toward my student loan debt. This one's my favorite one, let's go. For furniture flip number 12 of the month of April, I was able to pay off my student loan debt. I found this piece on Facebook Marketplace for $50 and I brought it home and I wanted to get straight to work on it. You guys will have to check out the full length video, but the moral of the story is my neighbor was actually the one who came out while I was working on this piece and said that he wanted to customize this for a space in his home. 
And little did he know that he was going to be the one that ended up pushing us over the top of our goal to pay off my student loan debt. So I got to cleaning and removing the hardware and then I sanded down the top and the front of the drawers. He came over and was loving the look of the piece so he decided to go with a black finish and wanted to keep the silver accents on the hardware and the legs. I ended up using Dixie Belle's silk paint in the color Anchor, which is a self-priming, self-leveling, and self-top coating paint that I definitely recommend you guys try out because it saves so much time in the long run because you don't have to prime and you don't have to top coat. It just saves a lot of time and it comes out with a very, very sophisticated look as you can see here in the buffet. So after I applied the silk paint, I reattached the hardware, shined everything up, and we did a big reveal for my neighbor and we surprised him like crazy with confetti. There it is. That is very, very nice. And boy, you were right. That bottom really does. Yeah, I like how it like matches with the hardware and yes, stuff. Yes, very much so. Yeah. And then like, like we talked about, and mm -hmm. there's no line drawers. Yeah, that is all awesome. definitely really nice. Yes. So you said you're not putting it in your house. That is correct, yes. Where are you putting it? Um, so Rooney and some friends are renting a place over in Chikara. Oh, that's awesome, a house? Um, it's a, like a condo type of thing. That's so awesome. person who has pushed us over the edge to pay off my student loan debt. No way. Wow. <laughs> Yay. Good deal. It was you of all people. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Wow. At the start of the month, I had $4,855 that I had left to pay on my student loan debt. And between YouTube ad revenue and furniture flipping, I was able to pay off that loan mid-April. So thank you to my neighbor who bought this piece after spending $50 on the piece originally, about $10 in materials, and then selling it to him for $325. I came away with a total profit of $265 that for the last time went straight toward my student loan debt. For furniture flip number 13 of the month of April, I flipped this beautiful dresser that I found on Facebook Marketplace for $80. When I saw it on Facebook, I knew I had to act fast, so Neiman and I took Felipe to pick it up. I decided to go very bold on this piece because it was a mid-century piece, and I was ready to try out an emerald green color with some gold hardware. I had ordered some paint from Melange, which is a new small business paint company that is located down in Texas, and I was excited to try them out. The color is called Gator Green, and I am so in love with it. After removing the hardware, hardware, cleaning the piece, giving it a scuff sand and priming, I was finally able to get started with the Gator Green paint. This paint is self-leveling and actually even self-priming as well, but I did end up priming because I didn't want to chance any bleed through from this stain underneath. This was my first time using Dixie Belle's gilding wax in the color gold for the hardware and man am I glad that I tried that out because it was really the perfect color gold for this hardware and for this piece. The hardware truly pops against the green. I ended up only having to apply two coats of the green paint from Melange and then I was able to do a top coat. One tip that I tried out on this flip was to add just a little bit of paint color to your top coat to help eliminate streaking and brush strokes. So that's what I did. And although it was a little bit scary looking going on, it all dried very nice and smooth. And I actually used the clear coat from Dixie Belle in the satin sheen. I reattached all the hardware and I was so happy with the results of this paint. I actually have a 10% off code for you guys to go over to melangepaints.com. And if you wanna try it out, use the code FLIP 
10 for 10% off of your entire purchase. You will not be disappointed with this paint. I ended up posting this dresser for $450, completely not knowing how my market was going to react and boy they reacted i had this baby sold in 12 hours with a venmo full amount in my account the next morning so i also had plenty of other people who were also interested so i know that that color green is very popular and it's definitely one that i will be trying out again i sold it for that 450 dollars and after paying 80 dollars and 20 dollars for material materials, I ended up with a total profit of $350. For furniture flip number 14 of the month of April, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. Some of our footage got lost and we were only able to show you bits and pieces of the flip, but I took this $45 dresser that I found on Facebook Marketplace and gave it a nice clean, removed all the hardware, and then I took my surf prep sander to this dresser because it had a lot of nicks and gouges and some damage so I sanded down the entire thing. The sanding didn't even get all of the nicks out so I ended up using some Dixie mud to fill in all of those gashes. After the Dixie mud was dry I did another light sanding to smooth everything out and then I used Dixie Belle's white boss as a primer because this piece was solid wood. I didn't really need to use the primer because the silk paint that I was going to be using is a self primer but I just wanted to take that extra step to be certain that I wasn't going to have to deal with any bleed through later on. I ended up using silk paint in the color conch to paint this entire piece and then I replaced the hardware with these cute little gold knobs that I've used in some previous flips. I posted this on Facebook Marketplace for $225 and then a few hours later I got another full Venmo amount in my account and I had that thing sold for full price in less than three hours. Like I said, sometimes they go off like that and sometimes you sit on them. It's just a game of who wants this furniture. After spending $45 on this dresser and spending about $10 in materials, I came away with a total profit of $170. For furniture flip number 15 of the month of April, I flipped this whole chest of drawers that I found on Facebook Marketplace for $65. I was ready to try out some new construction and this dresser was going to be perfect because the top was very outdated anyway. So I got some tools and pried off the top of the dresser. This was definitely a go with the flow flip. I removed all of the hardware, cleaned the dresser, and then filled the hardware holes because I knew I was going to be replacing the hardware. I used Minwax wood filler to fill each hole and then I used some bed slats that I found at Home Depot for $2.50. I used my amazing new sander from Surf Prep that just makes sanding so much easier. And if you are interested in grabbing a Surf Prep sander, I know they are a bit pricey, but trust me when I tell you that they make the job go by so much faster and so much easier. Be sure to use my code FFT10 to get 10% off of your Surf Prep sanding system. The link is down in the description. Once I I smoothed out all of my wood pieces. I applied Verithane's gel stain in the color Briar Smoke with a lint-free cloth and a foam brush. As I was letting those dry, I applied Kills Stain Blocking Primer. Since this dresser is solid wood, I did not want to risk any of that stain popping through. After the primer was dry, I was able to use the Chippy Barn's Magnolia White. And I haven't used the Chippy Barn in a while, but man oh man do I love this paint. I will be getting some new colors very soon. After my paint was all dry, I used some wood glue to apply the top pieces and then I used my new hardware jig to place the holes for the new hardware that one of my supporters sent me from my Amazon wish list. This hardware jig punch locator, which was also sent to me via my Amazon wish list, really did the trick and made placing the hardware holes so much easier. 
Once the new hardware was on, I was able to distress the piece slightly and apply some wipe on poly to the top wood slats to give it a little bit of protective finish. This was a really fun flip for me and I learned a lot and I also learned some things that I should do and some things that I shouldn't do in the future. I definitely want to try this type of dresser in the future. The only thing that's kind of holding me back about doing a type of dresser like this again is that my market isn't really accepting it very well. It may be because I have it a little bit higher priced. I started out with $400 on it and then I lowered it to $325 with still no bites. So I'm gonna be lowering it a little bit each day or each week, but I'm excited and I'm going to be patient and I know that right buyer is out there. For furniture flips number 16 and 17, I flipped these two French provincial nightstands that I found at the Salvation Army thrift store for $35 for the pair. I haven't done a French provincial set to this day, and so when I found these, I knew that I had to have them and they were in pretty decent shape, so I was excited to get started on them. I removed the hardware and stuck it in some water and some white lightning, and I had hopes of just cleaning it up and not adding any other finish to it. I cleaned down both nightstands and then again used my surf prep sander to smooth out the top surfaces. I gave a scuff sand to the rest of the surface and the drawers and this video will actually be debuting over on Dixie Bell's channel so be sure to head over there and get subscribed so that you can be the first to know when this video launches It'll be sometime in the month of May. Next, I took the color Midnight Sky from Dixie Belle's Mineral Chalk Paint line and I applied it. I love this color. It's almost black, but it's not quite black. It's actually a deep, deep, deep blue color, but it's so deep that it looks black. Between coats of paint, I ended up using a fine grit sanding block to smooth out the brush strokes. And then I applied another coat of paint using my Mr. Spray bottle to smooth out the paint. While that second coat was drying, I moved on to the hardware and I used Barkeeper's Friend to get a very shiny, shiny look to my hardware. And I was so pleased with the outcome because I really wanted to showcase the original hardware on these pieces. After I got the hardware cleaned, it was time for a top coat. So again, I added just a tad bit of paint to my clear satin top coat that I had used on these nightstands and it really helped eliminate any brush strokes or streaking in my dark finish. Once everything was dry, I reinstalled the hardware and got to take a look at these beautiful pieces. I have them listed for a pretty high price of $350 over on Facebook Marketplace. But again, since I've never done French Provincial, I just wanted to test out my market and see how they were going to take it. I've had several people inquire and I might even have another person who wants more of this style. If they don't end up selling for that full $350, that is okay because later in the month of May, I've got an event that I'm going to be at and I'm gonna be able to showcase some of my work and have it for sale over there. So more on that later, but those French provincial nightstands were some of my favorites of my flips to date. So this was one of the first months that we did not end up selling all of the pieces that I flipped in April. And I was a little bit frustrated at first, but then I just wanted to step back and remember that not every piece flies off of the shelf. I said that at the beginning of the video, but flipping furniture is something that you have to have patience for. You can't control who is going to reach out and inquire about your pieces. This is an uncontrollable realm, and so you've just gotta wait it out for that right person to come along, and trust me, they will come along. I know it can be frustrating. I live it day in and day out. I just want these pieces to sell because I know that they're good. You guys gotta be patient as well. I get messages a lot that say, I've had this on there for a week and nothing. Well, I've been there, it's not just you. So stick it out, be patient, and don't get frustrated. Let's do a recap of pieces that I have flipped this entire year. 
The month of January, I flipped 12 pieces. The month of February, I flipped 13 pieces. The month of March, I flipped 20 pieces. And the month of April, I ended up flipping 17 pieces. So that brings us to a total amount of flips of 62 in four months of flipping furniture. 2021 is shaping up to be a really great year for flipping furniture. And although I've still got these four pieces here, I'm confident that they are going to be in their new home in no time. The amount of money that I made with just flipping furniture this month and with me still sitting on four pieces of furniture, I ended up bringing in a total profit of $1,980 just by flipping furniture. That is part-time furniture flipping because I am a full-time kindergarten teacher during the day. From eight to four, I am at school, and then after that, I'm here flipping, also creating YouTube videos. So you guys, you can do it too. I just wanna do a quick recap on the amounts of money that went toward my student loan debt in each month. So I'm gonna grab my iPad just so that I got all of the numbers correct. So starting the beginning of our furniture flipping journey here on YouTube, and just a little bit before that, I started my student loan debt amount at $25,400. At the end of January, I had $16,300 left to pay. At the end of February, I had $10,820 left to pay. And at the end of March, I had $4,855 left to pay. And at the end of April, here we are, I have zero dollars left to pay on my student loan debt. This is from both furniture flipping as well as YouTube and other areas of revenue. And I couldn't have done this without you guys. Your support has kept me going on the days when I come home and I don't want to flip. I remind myself that you guys are out there and I'm showing you constantly that this can be done. And even if you have a full-time job, you can still take the time when you get home or when your kids go to sleep. I know it's extra, but it can be done. No excuses, you guys got this. Start flipping. If you are almost on the verge of starting, get out there, find a piece, find a $10 piece, find a $5 piece, shoot. Find a free piece, get some paint and slap it on there. Take a look at all of my videos. You guys can learn a lot from what I tell you and what I teach you in flipping furniture. Take it for what it is, but you guys, this is an easy way to earn a little bit of extra money. We shared with you after I paid off my student loan debt that we have our next goal to support some teachers and we want to help some teachers pay down their student loan debt. Since the middle of April, between YouTube ad revenue and then a little bit of my furniture flipping money, we've raised $5,000 to put toward and to start our Furniture Funding Teachers Support Fund. So with that $5,000, we have decided to take $1,000 and support five teachers that have applied on our website and we haven't chose those teachers yet, but stay tuned, get subscribed down below because we will be sharing the stories of the teachers that we choose to help support. We are still going to be raising money in a multitude of ways to help support teachers paying down their student loan debt. And tomorrow is actually Teacher Appreciation Day. With that being said, we have had the opportunity to read so many insightful and thought-provoking emails, comments, messages from you guys. And we are taking a step back to reevaluate our goals here at FFT. We are unsure if paying off teachers' student loan debt is really the best way to support those teachers, but rather we are thinking that we want to show a way that teachers, but not only teachers, anyone, 
can pay off debts on their own by taking on something like furniture flipping, as well as help future generations refrain from accumulating any student loan debt or debt at all. Many of you have student loan debt, credit card debt, mortgage payments, and then also many of you have shared stories on how you would like to start saving for your kid's college fund or even young teens saving up for a new car. And all of these stories have been so inspiring. With that being said, I am going to continue furniture flipping to show you guys the way that I paid down my student loan debt and the way that you guys can do it too. I have been asked several times on how much money I make just flipping furniture alone. So I've been able to share with some of you those numbers. From now on, Neiman and I are going to share our furniture flipping numbers, which will now go straight toward a down payment on a house. This week is Teacher Appreciation Week, and tomorrow, Tuesday, May 4th, is National Teacher Appreciation Day. So do me a favor and tomorrow or even sometime this week, whether it's a teacher that your students have currently, whether it's a teacher that you wanna reach out to from your childhood, please thank a teacher, write them a note, send them a letter, send them a message on Facebook, these things really help us teachers keep going. We love hearing from past students, and I can tell you that it will brighten your teacher's day. With that being said, we are going to be launching a new line of merchandise that 10% of the proceeds are going to go right into our Furniture Funding Teachers Support Fund and you can find these t-shirts over on our website, furnitureflippingteacher.com. You will not wanna miss this. There are several over there, some for moms, some for dads, some for teachers, and even some for supporters of teachers. So please head over there and get yours today. Also, all you teachers out there, if you haven't already, head over to our website, furnitureflippingteacher.com and get yourself applied to be a part of Furniture Funding Teachers. I hope you guys enjoyed all of our April flips. And if you wanna keep on the journey with us of now raising money to both support teachers as well as continue earning money to put toward our down payment on a future house, get subscribed down below. We would love for you to follow along on our journey. Be sure to head over to Instagram and follow us at Furniture Flipping Teacher, and we will be letting you guys know when these pieces get sold. Thank you guys for watching, and thank you for your constant support. I'll see you on the flip side.